Hello everyone, I am Sophia Ring, SP Saturn the Seventh, and you are watching Anime Egotists. Enjoy! And welcome back to the Anime Egotists, where they would never make Yu-Gi-Oh decks based on us. Speak for yourself, I would look awesome in a card. I'm not saying you wouldn't, I'm just saying they wouldn't. They wouldn't think to themselves, let's make a let's make cards of the V's idiots. Well, that's our archetype, the idiot card. I'll take it. <sighs> but anyways, my name's Alex, and I don't understand how traffic exists. Like, just drive. I'm Richard. I've been driving through Atlanta a lot lately, and I completely agree. Yeah. But speaking of things that kind of drive us crazy, Pokemon, as much as we love it, you guys seem to notice that we talk about game protagonists just a couple of different times. I, you, you must notice that if you're a longtime fan. Yeah, I think what we've done it once, no, three times. So yeah, uh, I think it yeah. might be time to continue that. Yeah, you may notice that for a couple of the different Pokemon series, the female game protagonists seem to be featured a lot, which is cool. But you also notice that the male protagonists seem to get left out, which is why we've done videos on what they would be like in their... in basically their own series. Not necessarily a different series, but if they were in the series that Ash and the company were in. We've talked about Ethan going from basically a cocky individual to becoming a lot more independent and, and standing on his own two feet with what he wants. We've talked about Brendan being a super cocky yet lonely person who comes to accept his friends and also butt heads with May a lot. And we've talked about Lucas finally observing what he wants to do and just becoming a kinder person despite we already made him kind. So we decided let's just keep going because people seem to like these for some reason. Yeah, but rather than try to force four different characters for uh, Gen 5 into one video, because there are five different characters, or four different playable characters that don't make appearances in the anime for that, we just yeah. went ahead and jumped straight into uh, Gen 6, where there's only one. Yeah, if you for some reason want us to cover Unibot with, with some of these characters, let us know and we'll, we'll, we'll try and come up with something. Yeah, um, but today we're going to be talking about Caleb. No, 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 no. Everybody has told me that his name is Callum, or at least that's what I like to, call, to tell myself, because Caleb is not a fantastic name, according to some people. Maybe there are cool people out there named Caleb, but to me, Callum just kind of works better. Exactly. We'll go by Callum then for the rest of this video. Yep, and we're going to be talking about what he's going to be like in Pokemon XY and XY and Z. Okay, and I just want to make two quick points. One, we're not going to, at least from my perspective, I'm not going to make him a rival to Ash in the sense of they fight over Serena or something like that. That, that. that doesn't sit well with me. Yeah, I've been trying to figure out where best to place him, and I did some interesting research because he's completely different based on what I read in the uh, about the manga than That's he is true. in the games, if you That's play Serena. True. Well, the games did not give them a whole lot to work with. But the second point I'm making is, we, for those of you who see the thumbnails for these video, our good friend Eddie Fasley seems to be doing them, because apparently he just likes doing that for us. So please go support him, give him some love, and but just support him more than you would us, because we're, we're, we're disasters at times. But thank you, Eddie. Yeah, well, this is only the fourth time we've tried filming this, so... Yeah, well, hey, please, with the Lucas one, it was far, far worse. But let's talk about... I almost said Caleb. Let's talk about Callum. All right, I'm kind of interested to hear how you started out. Okay, so based on all I was able to gather from the manga and just various sources, Callum is kind of a serious person. Not like cold-blooded or anything along those lines, but very standoffish. He he has friends, but overall, there are times he would rather kind of just be on his own. And considering XY well, XYZ is kind of a more serious series of Pokemon, I kind of would want to lean into that because I feel like that would be the best series for it. Yeah, I, based on my research, 
he was almost a shut-in at one point. Um, he was, um, he won some sort of like junior tournament and that led to issues, like yeah. because he was constantly being chased by paparazzi or something. Yeah, paparazzi, people wanting to battle him. So he basically became a shut-in in and like, like what we've talked about. Honestly, I, I know you don't have that much experience with it, but he really reminds me of Geo from Mega Man Star Force. Just somebody who really would rather just not deal with people and would rather just stay in. But ultimately developing into a kinder person and more open, but just we have to start somewhere. Yeah, I'm trying to decide. I almost want him to have, at least at the start, his only close relationship might be with Serena. Oh, no, that's exactly what I was going to say. Okay, so I would have, like... Because they're supposed to be neighbors still, even, like... That in is every, correct. Every continuity ex except for the anime. So I'd have pretty much... I, I think I kind of keep his uh, start uh, from based on the manga, where he's on his uh, own. He won a tournament years ago, was expected to be, like, champion of... Uh, Kalos, like, as soon as he got his Pokemon license to actually go out and compete in main tournaments and stuff. Yeah, heck, maybe you could even start it kind of when Serena leaves, because she's putting on her hat and just completely roasting her mom's opinion of another hat she was wearing. But maybe she mm -hmm. goes and knocks on her to on his door and be like, hey, I'm going on an adventure you, you wanted, and he's kind of he doesn't really say a whole lot, but he kind of demonstrates, n no. No, I, no. Oh, and she basically says, all right, suit yourself. Because deep down, she they could genuinely care about each other. It's just sometimes you don't want to force people into doing something they don't want to do, especially if they've had bad experiences. Exactly. And I would, I would kind of have maybe some flashbacks or something where... Because in the manga, it specifically states that her, her mom was pretty much taking care of Callum in the manga. Uh, in the manga, like, she would prepare his meals and bring them over to him. So I kind of have that role go to Serena a little bit. She's helping her mom. She's delivering his meals and stuff to help him out with certain things. Yeah. I'd like to think he would at least have a mom. I, I don't want to I don't want to get into the rabbit of parents who aren't around anymore. Well, that's actually in the manga, but based on what I read, he's uh, his he does have parents, but they're working internationally or something along those lines. Which is, yeah, but but I, I'm okay with, his, like, hypothetically, let's say his dad is doing that. His mom is, like, trying her best, and maybe in the end she's the one to be like, you're never, I, you could, look, I love you and I want to take care of you, but you're never going to get better if you don't basically try. And she could be a very calm, kind, patient person, and he could finally be like, all right, fine, let's go, let's go. Maybe he already has a frog of the year by the time the show starts. Or whatever starter. I just picked Frog of the Year because, like, why not? Yeah, I, I, that was one thing I was trying to, I was debating. It's like, okay, if he's got one of the starters, which one does he have? Was kind of the thinking about it. It's like, okay, because of the three, the Froki line has, like, besides Ash having it, there's the ninja group that uses it, and after that, I, there's not really another main character that comes in so much. I, I mean, Serena would be more of a main character than he would, and it's a and it's an opposing starter. But then again, it's kind of just the point of because I'm going to be a hundred percent honest. I don't love a lot of the Kalos evolution, and at least the starters. But let's we we can just say we can just say Frogadier at that point and move on. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll agree to that. I think it's probably a good fit and could lead to some interesting things later on, I would say. Yeah. Also, you, you he wouldn't have to show up too frequently early on. He could You could show, like, tiny little scenes of him looking at other Pokemon on eating with his Frogadier, that sort of thing. But we talked about this. I don't remember how early it was or how late it was, but the camp episode would kind of be a perfect what's really up with this guy sort of time to talk about that yeah i'd almost want it to be like his mom's trying to get him to get out of the house so she signs him up for camp and 
dry and pretty much dries in there. And you, you see, that's where that would be probably a good place to introduce him to the rest. He knows Serena, but get him introduced with the rest of the characters. And I guess have him partnered with, um, Tierno, Trevor, and, um, Shauna. Shauna, there we go. <laughs> ah, you just had to, you just had to forget her name, but ultimately he could very much be good at what he does, like doing all the activities and stuff, but it could always be the cliche of, oh, well, we're not really working together. And it also doesn't really seem like you're having fun. Like you're just doing this. And he kind of doesn't understand at first, oh, this is supposed to be teamwork based, but throughout the, I, I, I almost said tournament, but throughout the little mini arc, he, he's learning step by step how to get used to people. Like maybe Tierno in particular, he's kind of like, I, I mean, he seems like a nice guy, but it doesn't, it seems like we go together like oil and water. Yeah, I would. I, I don't want him to be completely standoffish. I, I feel like, yeah, not quite understanding friendship as well or something along those lines. He, oh, absolutely. Like, he doesn't have to be mean or anything, but it's just in the case of I, I'm i not used to this yet. Yeah, he's... At this point, I would want him to be... He's so used to being kind of on his own, doing his own thing, that he's... Tr that trying to understand and actually grow in this camp is a big deal for him. Yeah, maybe like when... Maybe at the end, I don't know if they ever did this, but it's like, okay, guys, take a picture with your groups. And it could be his group and Ash's group. And then he could be standing off to the side, but like Bonnie Bonnie and Shauna could be like, hey, get in the picture. He's like, uh, yeah. And he, they just take the picture together. Maybe he even makes a weird face that they're just like, uh, you know what? Memories. Let's, we'll hold on to this. Exactly. It would be, I don't know, kind of entertaining to watch his growth in this part I would say is the best idea he'd still not be comfortable at the end like he wouldn't be traveling with a group at this point I don't no. think he ever he may never get there but he'd be wanting to like I would like to see like him not do a smell you later like Gary but something like he actually says see you later as he's leaving or something yeah, that's like a big says, deal. see you next time and people are like oh he's just le wait he said see you like he'll see us again like like he's slowly starting to realize oh i like these people exactly and i'm still trying to decide what would be his goal though do you want him to be competing going to compete in the kalos league or yes he have something yes else? and no Yes and no. Okay. Okay, so well, apparently... Uh, uh, how do I put this? How do I put this delicately? Um, apparently the Kalos arc was supposed to be longer for some... But I, I don't remember specifically what happened to make them, like, crunch it all together. But I wouldn't necessarily want him competing in this Kalos League. Like, maybe it's him starting to realize at some point, you know... People may hound me and it may be kind of uncomfortable, but deep down, I do want to do this. And maybe it takes him a little longer to realize that. And then finally, maybe at the end, he could realize, you know what? You're leaving. I'm staying. I'm going to become champion of Kalos. And whether he does or doesn't, it's... maybe he does. But ultimately, it could just be him trying to realize, I've always wanted this, but it's not going to be easy. Because it's not like paparazzi exactly make life easy for people. Exactly. Um, I think that's probably a good goal. I'd almost want it to be, he kind of make, comes to the decision last minute, like when Ash is competing for his eighth gym badge, somehow Callum gets involved and decides he wants to compete at that point. And he has to by the time the tournament starts, he's only got four of the badges. So he just doesn't have enough at this point. He's like, eh. And he, then, I guess during this the tournament and the uh, Team Flare arc, he's trying to decide, okay, do I, what do I need to do with my life? Do I want to try to win the last four badges and compete next time? Or do I want to actually move on and try something different? Exactly. 
because I'd like to think that some of these characters would actually be trying to be champion. Like we, we like it. It just makes sense in my opinion. I just didn't want to throw him in the tournament necessarily because I, I don't know. If he's such a prodigy at some point, having him lose could be somewhat of an issue. Yeah, and this tournament was packed uh, with a lot of um, faces. Because I'm, I'm trying to remember, there was Ash in Milan, Tierno. Was Trevor in this? Yeah, Trevor. He no, got he stomped. Wasn't. He got stomped by a lawn in like the first round. It was embarrassing. Okay, and then um, the guy with the septile. I always forget his name as well. Sawyer. Sawyer. So there's already at least five people in the main tournament, not even like preliminaries or anything, that were like part of this little group. So. Yeah, so I'm kind of okay with him. Like maybe he's just watching on the sidelines with some people, with, with them. Also, like even with everything, he could be like very early on. Like he could, he seems like he might be a frustrating person to work with at times. Like, he, like you could have him at one point, maybe say to Serena, like, oh, look, I, I'm, I hope you know, I'm at least trying. I don't, I'm not making, I'm not making life easy for you, but I'm thankful that you, you've stuck by my side this whole time. And she could basically be like, you would have done the same for me, and he, like, they'd be very close. Yeah, I'd almost want, well, I'd want them to stay in touch. I want, like, I know we wouldn't see it because Ash moves on and he's the main character, but it just, them having a, they're not quite, I don't know, maybe best friend kind of relationship or that yeah. long-term friendship that oh, means a oh, lot to them. Oh, no, 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 that's exactly what I mean. I mean, they're able, people are able to call each other an X and Y. Maybe every now and then they're like, hey, be on the lookout for this in whatever town you happen to be in. And, oh, we happen to be there. Oh, what a coincidence. <laughs> so that tends yeah, to happen sure a see. lot. Yeah. So something I was just thinking about, should he have be in the... Um, when they do like the Serena Ash backstory when they were both at Oaks camp that they have reused again for uh, going Chloe as well. Should he have been in that? So like it's like that could be like right after he wins the tournament, he's still kind of optimistic and he's maybe a little full of himself at this point. Yeah, I was going to say either right after or right before, like they learn about Pokemon at Pokemon camp and that's when he's kind of like, oh, okay. I got this. And, like, he's still a prodigy, so maybe he has a little bit of a big head, but not so much as it's, like, as it's dominating the conversation or anything. Yeah, I just... Yeah, I don't... Again, this is only focused on in, like, two or three episodes where they discuss that Ash and Serena have come coming together, but I would say, like, Serena and Calvin came from Kalos to just do this camp together. Yeah, um, that sort of that sort of thing. Heck, you could have him be very protective of her. Like if somebody, like you, you, they, they seem to love this trope. Like have like a bully type trainer who's like not nice to people. Well, he could get like close to Serena, like he wants to battle or something, and Calum could immediately be like, "Back up, back up." Yeah. So that would kind of be an interesting thing, and I'd almost want to see him be almost annoyed with Ash about because isn't Serena like she's either scared of Pokemon or something and Ash is the one who comforts her and I, would... I think that might have been Lily but I we, we can kind of write around we can write around that at some points I know there's something going on with Pokemon either she's or she like falls down scrapes her knee and Ash is the one who comes and that's I think that was when they first met like when they were like five six however old yeah, so that's kind of what I'm talking about, though. So oh, okay, all right. Have him, have him run like Ash is helping her, and he runs up and kind of side tackles Ash out of the way or something. Trying to that might work. As see, long she's as it, okay. As long as it's not like a full blow on I like her more than you do. Thing. As long as it's just simply I just want yeah. her to be okay because I'm because apparently a lot of people hate Callum, and that's specifically the reason, you know, despite the fact that Ash and Callum have never once interacted in any way, shape, or 
form. Y'all make this tough. No, I'm not, I'm not talking about like making them a couple or anything. I'm just talking about like he's he seriously cares about Serena as like a friend, and he and he, he maybe makes the mistake of thinking Ash knocked her down or something, and uh, or something at this point. Yeah, just, and they're they're five, so it works. Yeah. So it's just a random kind of little detail about his relationship with Serena and a little bit of Ash beforehand. Okay, yeah. We've been getting kind of serious, but I do have a couple of comedic things about him just to make things a little more tolerable. Okay. Okay, so maybe when he first meets Team Rocket and it's like, wait, who are these guys? Oh, they're Team Rocket. They try and steal their, they're trying to steal our Pokemon. He's like, oh, I really like their motto. It's kind of catchy. And everybody just looks at him like, what? what? But uh, just just send out your frog ear and help us. And he's like, okay, go. Uh, yeah, that would be funny. I had an idea for another thing, though. I'd want him and uh, Tierno especially to have an episode. And oh, gosh. Tierno's, Tierno's using like his fancy dance move battling styles where he's able to use the dancing to defend and stuff and Callum tries to copy it and has absolutely no rhythm and his Pokemon can't do it either and it's just so bad I was kind of and at the end the of the episode thing. he's just like he's at just the like, end of the episode he's like yeah I, can't, I, I need to find my own way of doing this or, or I also thought of that, but also with the sense of he at first he's like, no, I, I'm I'm not doing I'm not doing that. This, but at the end of the episode when he finally tries doing it and fails, Tierno's like, and they're all like, Tierno was his dancing that bad? He's like, I may never dance again watching it. <laughs> yeah, that would be just a funny episode between one of the more comedic characters and I guess at this point, well, we've made one of the very more serious characters. Yeah. Also, I, I guess the thing for me is, even if he made a mistake, I would have him be very kind of nonchalant about it. Like, kind of be like, um, yeah, dude, you do realize you sent out the wrong Pokemon, right? What are you talking about? Oh, well, it's just you sent out a Pokemon with a disadvantage, and now it's probably gonna... It, it probably isn't gonna win. He could just be, like, with a very serious face, he might be like, <laughs> whoops, forgot about that. And everybody could just collapse, like, you're an idiot. How, how did you... How are you a prodigy? Because, like, look, he, he's still a kid. Kids are still prone to make really dumb mistakes. Mm hmm Yeah. I'm trying to think what else would be a good add-on for him. I don't... I mean, I have several others uh, if you want to wait. Well, I was... I've been thinking... So... Do we want his, um, you said it's Frogadier at this point, but do you want it to evolve into Greninja at the, towards the end of the series? And uh, the real question is, does it have the Battle Bond ability like Ashes? No, but I was kind of going to get to that because one of the things that people just casually seem to forget about, forget, is that remember, X and Y had Mega Evolution. Okay, yeah, I mean, that was the big deal. Yeah, but the thing is, I would have him, maybe he gets a Mega Ring at some point and a stone. Maybe he has a Pokemon, he hits it, but it doesn't do anything. Like, maybe his Pokemon and him, like, they work together, they care about each other, but at some point, their bonds are not really the best. But as time progresses, he saves them, they're helping each other out, and he can finally learn how to use Mega Evolution. Because it seems kind of silly how it's just like, oh, here you go, um, Mega Evolve. So, is he replacing Karina's kind of story, or is it um, just another kind of, like, the kind of similar, where hers is just, it goes out of control, his is, he can't even do it. Like, it, it might exactly. start to glow, like, and then it stops. It's like a separate story, because I really did love Karina's story. Okay. Okay, I kind of, like, it shows that there are different ways Mega Evolution can, I guess, fail, I guess is the right term, where the Pokemon doesn't evolve or doesn't Mega Evolve at other, and then Karina's could still be, well, it Mega Evolves, but the Bond's not strong enough to prevent it from 
go this using its power independently at this point. Exactly. Especially considering, it, like I said, it's not a case of his Pokemon or him are at odds, but maybe it's just a case of they... This is going to sound really dumb, but they can kind of just see each other as we're basically just like business partners. We're working together on this. But then, like I said, as he progresses and sees how Ash and everyone else are like, he accepts his Pokemon like as his family, as like Pokemon he truly cares about. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think that would be a good growth for him to go through, because, yeah, I mean, especially being the prodigy and then kind of becoming that shut-in. I don't know. He just, he never built that connection. He just automatically assumed, well, I'm the one who's good at all this, so I can make any Pokemon usable. Yeah. It's kind of his mindset at the it's start. Kind, it's kind of an opposite mindset of Paul, but in a somewhat toxic way, so it kind of works. I like the way you phrase that. That's, that's not a bad... You should You should be a writer at some point. That'd be interesting, but I don't know if I have the time or the patience to do that. <laughs> Trust me, as somebody who does write, it's it's a nightmare. But I guess some, he would, obviously he would like you could he doesn't have to be at set events, but he could it could show every now and then he's watching Serena at the showcases or what whatever it was. Despite the fact we've both admitted that they the showcases were never particularly our favorites, but just a case of oh, I'm watching while I'm at this cafe or at the Pokemon Center or something like that. Yeah, I'd almost want him to be, at one point, maybe have a, like, they run, because I'm trying to remember if there's an episode that involves the past Kalos Queen, the one with the, uh, what, oh uh, God, what's it? I, ha I had the name just a second ago. The, Isn't it Aria the, the or Ariana or something like that? It could be. I don't. It's been a long time since I watched X and Y. I think it's Aria, um, but I'll look it up. But I could almost see him and her, like, being. I don't. I don't want to say related, but having some sort of relationship off screen, and then you, like, they meet. Uh, in a cafe, and that, and Serena walks in, and sees Callum, and is shocked by who he's with. It's just, and he's just kind of like, of, he's like, "Oh, you, you know her? Are you friends?" Like, and, no, this is Arya. He's like, "Okay, I know that we've been uh, talking a lot lately. We've we met up on a random battle the other day." Oh, oh God, she would get Serena. I envisioned Serena getting really sick of Callum at some points. But I kind of live for it. Yeah, they, they have that friendship that's... They they seriously care for each other, but... Specifically, Serena can get annoyed by Callum. I, yeah. I don't think Callum really gets annoyed by anything Serena does. It's just because he doesn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> I, really, I really hope we're writing him in a good light, because there are times I'm thinking to myself... Are we ruining this character? But then I realize what character. He has very little to go off based on the games. Exactly. We're, we've, he's already, in my opinion, based on if we were to create exactly what we've talked about, better than the game character because he's so bland in the games. Yeah. Well, to be fair, so is Serena. But they've done, they've made her, they've done a good job with her. If anything, I feel like yeah. Bonnie in particular, like towards... We talk about our, our favorite trope of Pokemon when people just randomly start singing. I You could honestly do a little story of when they Bonnie gets squishy. She could be like, are you going to sing with me? And he's kind of like, I don't want to, but for you, I'll do it. Like, maybe he this is at the point where he's accepted them as his friends. It's still awkward, but he's still like, if it makes her happy, and Clement could be like, you don't... I mean, I don't even do that with her, but Callum's just like, but yeah, but I want to. That would be another interesting episode. Um, kind of the episode that maybe brings the, him more into the fold, I guess, where he's more less of an acquaintance, more of a friend, would be uh, have one of those episodes where the team gets split up, like Team Rocket attacks, they all get ejected in different directions. 
and that be the episode where he and Bonnie kind of get blown off together and he's uncomfortable around her because he's has no siblings and he's not used to anything uh anyone really younger than him and now he's having to take care of her while trying to get back with uh the rest of the group so that he can reunite them yeah but at the end when they come together she's like like yeah callum did a really good job and he's kind of He's not blushing about her or anything, but he's just like, oh, it was it was nothing. Like, maybe the next time they see each other, she runs over to him because she's happy to see him again. And he's kind of like, oh, that's right. You exist, and then... Maybe he, pats, think... maybe he always pats her on the head Ed, as a sign of saying... Like, that's, the, that's kind of their way of acknowledging each other. You know, it'd be almost funny if she starts calling him like big brother or something just and that it pisses off clement so <laughs> clement's just imagine just imagine that kind of relationship with him and clement clement's just annoyed because she calls him big brother as well he, I just, no, that would no. kind of be hilarious no no i i i like that idea i like that i'm penciling that in but we've kind of been <laughs> ignoring two characters Okay. I, I'm gonna be honest. I have nothing for Trevor. Not that I think he's bad or anything. I I really like Trevor. I just don't know what their interactions would be like. You're you're right about that. There's no. Unfortunately, Trevor's kind of one of those that if I had to pick a rival to get rid of or just a random character to get rid of from this series, it'd probably be him because he was kind of the least developed. I mean, he had a couple interesting episodes where he wanted, like, the one where he wanted to take a picture of Moltres, but Absolutely. other than that, it's like... Other than that, he he shows up, I think, the f- least of all of the like, side travel kind of companion rivals. So... Honestly, I feel like him, Tierno, Trevor, and Callum and themselves could be their own kind of trio. Like, they're trying to like basically find these rare Pokemon and everything, and he's kind of just along for the ride. Maybe they get in trouble every now and then, but he's just like, you know, I like them. They're a little weird, weird, but I like them. And they could both look at him and be like, you're calling us weird? Really? <laughs> you know, it'd be also hilarious, especially early on. It's like they find not legendaries, but maybe some pseudo legendaries and uh, Trevor's getting ready to ke- uh, to take pictures of them, and he's just like Ultra Ball Go, and he catches it without even battling it or something. It's just it's like, kind of a precursor to Go. And he t- he lets out Pokeball. It's like you can take a picture of it now, now, and it po- and it could like do a little pose. And those and Trevor could just be like, well, the the moment the moment's gone now. But I'm yeah, I was trying to catch it in the wild. What it, like what it naturally looks like and. Now it's posing, and it's but it, that that just keeps happening. Like every time they find a rare or final evolution of something, and Callum catches it before Tre- Trevor can take the picture he wants. Yeah. Do you re- before we move on to the other person? Do you remember the mirror episode, what, like the Cave of Reflection? Is that mm-hmm. what it's called? Where they went into an alternate dimension and everybody was different. Yeah, like. It, they were kind of the opposite of their normal personalities where Ash is not confident at all. And then Serena's a bully. Clement is stupid. If I remember correctly, he, he was very adventurous and he was like physically fit. Like he wasn't jacked or anything, even though that's probably what journeys would have done, but he was like physically fit and body had a cut. sounded like body was weird. Yeah. She was also kind of mean. Wasn't she? She lost her more kind personality she called kept calling him brother dear it was weird (laughs) yeah but you Mm, could honestly have callum be in that episode but his mirror personality is just the friendliest person was like you know you look like me you know what you could use a big hug come here and he's like no back up back up it's not even like he's running away he's just constantly walk like speed walking away and his counterparts nope, speed nope, walking behind nope, him nope 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 uh that would be kind of hilarious to watch and it would give i don't know that 
I want him in a good number of episodes, but again, I probably about the same because that's the thing about X, Y, and Z. The rivals are in it enough that they all feel pretty well deserved, like as rivals. I mean, in a sense, yes, but I would argue that Alon didn't feel felt more like his own character than a rival. Like, mm-hmm. honestly, I exactly. look at Alon's character and I kind of don't see him as Ash's rival, which is both a good and a bad thing at times. So you could have him just be his own character. Ash and him could battle a good bit. Just that sort of thing. But like I said, he decides in the end, okay, now I'm going to go for the League Challenge. It's like, oh, well, if you ever want to battle again, let me know. It's like, well, you're going to leave half your team behind the next time I see you. So sure, let's do it. Yeah. And I'd almost want like him to promise he'll watch out for Greninja on an occasion for Ash at the end of the, the series. He's like, well, I'm traveling around here. I'll, I'll go check on Greninja on an occasion for you to make sure everything's okay. Exactly. That could be a good, that could be a cool thing. We haven't talked about Shauna a whole lot this episode, which makes sense since you forgot her name, but we really haven't talked about her that much. Do, do you want me I'm to, kind to of decide? Go? Yeah, I hadn't really thought of a good relationship for them. Okay, I'm going to be honest, the manga doesn't give me a whole lot to go off of. If anything, I feel like Shauna's kind of laid back in the manga, from what I recall. But if I could have it be a situation of, like, let's say one of them gets hurt or something like that, similar to when Serena scraped her knee, maybe he has been just like, all right, you get, so I don't really trust you to put this on yourself, so, like, maybe he puts it on her hand, he gets super close to her without really realizing... It's kind of making her uncomfortable. She's like, what's happening? I appreciate the help, but this is weird. Okay, so she's just kind of weirded out by him. She's the only one that sees him as really strange. Kind yeah, of. but of course, down the line, she, it develops. And look, look I, I don't want to throw anybody... I don't want to throw anybody a bone in this, but I kind of feel like we have to, considering... What even the developers and the writers of Gen 6 have said, and I feel like you're, sl- you're starting to realize where I'm going with this. Yeah, I kind of have a feeling, but... The, well, okay, y- yes, but you know I would write it in a way that wouldn't make you completely miserable about it. Maybe in the end... This is the one time I'm going to do this for y'all. Maybe it's she slowly starts to like him, and but it's not necessarily he's too dense. It's... I. I don't know what to do in this situation. Yeah, I kind of had a similar kind of idea that by at the end of the series, maybe during the Team Flare arc, he rescues her again and like one of those roots comes up and throws her into the air and he catches her or something, and that's yeah. kind of her she's looking up in that there's a little bit of a blush, but other than that, that we don't need more than that. No, no. And like I said, it's not that he, he, she might even pick up on it early. Like, oh God, I like this guy. But it's like I said, it's not that he do, he's too dense to understand. I mean, he, it might work because he was a shut in at one point. But for me, it would just be a case. I feel like Jabari did an excellent job of describing it. Like when he not a confessed to Naruto. It wasn't that he was too dense at that point. It's that he really doesn't have anybody to explain this to him. But don't make it a huge deal or anything, because, like, they're still, like, what, 10, 12, however old? Yeah, it's so hard to tell now. They keep t- calling Ash a 10-year-old, but then sometimes he looks like he's older, or other times he's not, so... Yeah, but like we'll I say said, 10. we'll give them that tiny little morsel of maybe there's something, but overall, like, it wouldn't go any further than that. Not unless we start aging up the characters dramatically, and that's another video for another day. Yeah, and as I said, it's fine for 10-year-olds to have crushes on other 10-year-olds, it, but it doesn't need to be a full-on relationship and stuff like that. So Exactly. That's kind of where we leave it. Yeah. So, that, unless we get that, some sort of time soon. Yeah, exactly. I, 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 and, and we probably lost half the viewers right there, but those of you who are still sticking around, thank you. But regardless, can I, can I, see, we've been dancing around Team Flare a bit. Do you mind if I add something to him? Okay. Callum doesn't trust Alon. 
Okay, I can see that. He, like, there's he looks around. And he's like, this. There's something up with this guy. He might not be malicious per se, but I'm not comfortable around him. That would be an interesting relationship where the one that's kind of on the outside doesn't trust someone who, like, instantly got it in. Like, that was the thing. Like, when Alon finally met Ash, they're like, they're not friends necessarily but they like were acquaintances very fast was kind of how i saw their relationship go yeah i kind of remember it going the same way so maybe have it be where everybody else in the group's like oh alon's cool and he seems like he's going to be a really strong trainer which he is but have callum be like i don't know there's something off just he can't quite put his finger on it. He may he starts going back to the outside of the group maybe at that point. Yeah, and maybe like Bon like Bonnie or somebody else would be like, hey, is everything good? And, and he's kind of eyeing along. He's like, yeah, yeah. He doesn't say anything wrong. Maybe he finally starts to say something, but they, they and I don't I don't like the trope where it's like, oh well, we, we're not gonna believe you, and then it turns out he's right. But maybe it's a case of maybe there's something. And, and then at once the team player arc starts, he could be like, oh, so um, remember when I said not to trust the lawn and all this other sorts of stuff? So um, who was right on that? Me? I think it was me. And they're just like, now is not the time for jokes. I'm like, and he could just be like, no, I'm growing. This is a good time to joke. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm. But I'd like him and Alon to kind of having to eventually uh, begrudgingly have to work together because like once and for some part of the battle they maybe even have an episode where they're fighting the vines that are growing everywhere and they can't seem like they try to do it on their own and can't seem to get it to stop but when they actually come together and work together something seems to work they are actually able to stop the vines from proceeding exactly Exactly. I guess at some point we should talk about the Pokemon he has on his team. Well, let's do the last kind of relationship. Um, sure. Which, well, I guess there's two we should probably cover. Um, okay. There's Lysander. Does he have any relationship with him? Like, I through... kind of forgot Lysander existed. I'm gonna become. I'm gonna be honest. There are times I just sort of forget that Lysander's around. So I don't have anything specific. <laughs> Yeah, because he's already tied to Alon and then Ash defeats him. Maybe have him beat, like, uh, have Callum go up and get defeated by Lysander at first. And then Ash and Alon show up for their uh, battle with him. Heck, it doesn't that even have to be, be a, enough. a full-on defeat. It could be like his Pokemon are pretty much on the verge of collapsing, but basically... Here's the thing. I'm not in love with the power of friendship thing, but the, the power of friendship wouldn't necessarily help him win. It would just kind of just be like, we're going to hold out for as long as possible because this isn't just a simple, oh, well, if we lose, there'll be another chance. Like, it's if we lose, the world is pretty much over. All right. And then the other one is his relationship with Professor Sycamore. Is... I feel. <sighs> I don't know, I'm gonna be honest. I feel like Sycamore and him would be cool, but he would also be very patient, like in the sense of, hey, take your time with your growth. You don't have to grow immediately. Yeah, I was almost thinking that maybe Sycamore has regrets about Kyle. Maybe he's the one who sponsored him for the original tournament or something hmm. and feels guilty for, well, really wants Callum to succeed and grow as a person rather than be what he kind of became due to that tournament. And kind of, but as I said, feels a little bit of guilt for forcing this kid and then having unforeseen consequences of the paparazzi and people constantly trying to battle him. Yeah, but you could even pull, you could even do a thing where Sycamore wants to apologize at some point, but before he even can, Callum just says, thank you. I've gotten stronger because you first pushed me. It hasn't always been easy, but you were there. You were there, and you helped me get through it. And that—that that could be a small little moment for them. 
Yeah, and I think that kind of sets everybody up and all the major players. I mean, we could talk about Sawyer, but I don't think, I don't really need them to have that close of a relationship. They may meet at like the tournament or something. Yeah, it's a, and, and they, they literally just say hey to each other and move on. Yeah, I, I, it could be cool to see Sawyer be the one to explain how to get to Mega Evolution for uh, to Callum and be because he's the one who because he had to have it explained to him earlier in the series. Yeah. So it, it that could be weird. interesting, but I don't know. It seemed weird that hit, that Tierno and Trevor also got Mega Evolution, but I don't even think it was explained. It's just like like oh, I have a surprise waiting. They Mega Evolve and then they both lose. Yep. Heck, maybe after they both lose, before they meet up with everyone, like they're 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 proud of their team and they're proud of their efforts, but it's not. But they're a little upset about. It. And like maybe he could pat them both on the shoulder and be like, "Hey, I'm proud of you guys. You guys did a good job." Um, and th then maybe they tackle it with a group hug or something, and he's just like, ah, "Yeah, yeah, it's all right. It, it's all right." And he could maybe try the same thing with Serena when she ends up losing to. When she ends up losing to Arya, is that right? God, I don't remember because I could. Does she win the final? Kalos I believe. I believe she does. And it's just like, oh, okay, now go battle this person, and then she just loses. Hmm. Yeah, it could be. I I want want him to be in it, as you said, a few like in the audience. Maybe he's sitting with Ash and. Uh, and everybody the first time and at the final and maybe one other time you see him watching her on tv yeah like i feel like the uh, finals he absolutely has to be there yeah let's see what else there was um and maybe when they're watching all together either like he's noticing shauna's because i feel like shauna uh, was breaking down at losing which it's a big deal he could like kind of like lean over to her and be like hey you did a really good, like, what you did, that was, that was really cool. And may, and they have, like, a tiny little moment. I want to make this guy a somewhat nicer person, because we, we started off real depressing. No, at this point, pretty much, I'm trying to think, after, sometime between, like, the sixth and the eighth gym badge for Ash is when we start seeing his real transformation. He get he starts being more friendly and open than he was at the start, especially. Yeah, yeah, that could work. Um, all right, so I guess now we should definitely talk about what Pokemon we'd have him have. So we yeah. already have him having a frog deer. That's his ace or main Pokemon. I was thinking Esper, and it evolves into a male Meow stick, but it evolves right around the time he's fully, his character's like fully complete. Okay. Should we have... You know, it'd be interesting. Um, I know it doesn't really fit. I'm trying to think if there was a... Is it, are there any friendship evolution Pokemon um, that are from Gen 6? I was trying to think. Yeah, there's about... I, I, at, least, at least I hope. At least I hope so. But he doesn't even necessarily need to have just Kalos Pokemon on, but it 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 might it might help. Okay, but I, I kind of understand what you mean, but I feel like he should also have at least one Pokemon that can actually like, you know, mega evolve since we were talking about that earlier. Yeah, the the one I was thinking for his mega evolution, and let me know what you think. Um because this would be a good counter for something else we talked about earlier. He has Mega Charizard Y. So he has the opposite of um, Alon's Mega Charizard. So like Trevor. Oh, I forgot Trevor had that one. Yeah, it, 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 you have to realize there aren't a lot of, like, it, it gets it gets kind of complicated at that point. But uh, I once again, I don't blame you for that. It's not like, I don't know. Well, they're only shown like once, like at least Tierno, I think had, he mega evolved at least twice in the series. I don't even remember, dude. I mean, he could have an Alakazam for a mega evolution or a Pinsir. Actually, I'm gonna say Alakazam because I remember Ethan had Pinsir. 
Okay, that would be a cool one at least. That's or an Ampharos, either way. For its luscious magic, luscious, amazing hair. Let's, let's see. What Pokemon would be a good one for him to have? I... He doesn't even have to have a full team at this point, so that, so... Yeah. Let's see. Um... Should... What should we give him an Aegis Slash or whatever the sword Pokemon is? Because I feel like not that many people had it. That would be a cool one. Uh, it was one of my favorites uh, playing the game. Yeah, um, I feel like very few people actually used it in the anime. That's so weird. So, looking at these. Some of the ones that I'm thinking might be a good one for him to have would be either he could have a Pichu that evolves into a Pikachu towards the end of the series, because that's a friendship evolution. True. Uh, he could also have a Togepi that he evolves into. Um, Togetic or? Yeah, at the, towards the end of the series. Both of those could be interesting, as well as possibly a Golbat that evolves into Crobat. Yeah, I was about to say, we're giving him a lot of friendship Pokemon at this point. Well, <laughs> I'm just thinking one of the one of these, and it, this symbolizes him changing his view on his Pokemon and becoming friends instead of uh, just there. And this kind of is also the point where he gets Mega Evolution and all that for uh, his Alakazam. Yeah, yeah. Also, look, I feel, yeah, that's the weird thing. I feel like Mega, with every Mega evolution we saw, we still didn't really see all of them. So I'm not against adding a couple more. Obviously, not his whole team, but he can have one of them. Okay. Um. So let's see. So we have. Frogadier, Boom. Alakazam, Boom. Al uh, Aegislash. We'll say one friendship Pokemon just so he has that aspect, I think, is a good f one for him. Um, and then you just want to do one more? So one fifth, a fifth yeah. Pokemon? Yeah, maybe, maybe if he returns in Journeys, he has a full team. But for now, we can just stick with five, because we're not doing great at this right now. Yeah, um... We can leave it think? at four, I guess, for now. Yeah, I was about to say, what do you think of Furfro? That poodle-looking thing. Okay. That would be an interesting one. It's It only got, like, one spotlight episode. I'm really surprised, like, no one really seemed to have one after, like, the first few episodes. Because I feel like something funny could be, like, it's it looks so prim and proper... But whenever it's around him, it like it acts like an actual dog. Like it rolls around on its back and starts panting like an actual dog when he's like, all right. And it just starts rubbing its belly. Yeah. So that was something else I wanted to discuss with you. Rubbing rubbing my belly? Well, no. Um you had mentioned it er earlier. Um would he appear in journeys? And okay. if so, what would be his role? He, he could, I'm going to be honest. As much as I like Diantha, I don't feel like they did... Here's the thing. I feel like they did a pretty good job with Diantha and X and Y, but I also kind of feel like nobody really remembers anything she did. So maybe I maybe it's a case... Of, sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say I tend to agree with that. I, I think she's in like a few episodes on her own, and then she's in the final team flare arc after the tournament i think that's it heck like maybe he's not champion at this point but maybe he runs into ash and he's like hey i'm still trying once i become maybe it's the case of once i become champion we're gonna battle i'm gonna beat you and yeah that, that's basically it like he's a lot he's a little more competitive now rather than just standoffish i don't know if he would actually beat diantha i really don't know because just I don't know, but I'd like to think that he would open up a little bit. Okay. Um, I could see it. I hate to say it, but I almost 
like him to replace well i'd like him to replace um god um diantha as the champion no and that's fine be in the mess and be in the masters eight and at the same time replace iris with alder because at least it, how we've written his character he has the goal of becoming champion it makes sense it's like okay now we see his growth he is champion he's so at least it makes sense at the end of x y or black and white it's just like oh i'm going off on a different journey bye and then yeah. and then the next time we see her she's champion it's like yeah yeah pokemon chronicles sound real good right now huh but but I, I guess the thing is i have a way to kind of not fix but like kind of like tape up iris and stuff but that's for but that's not really that's another video for another day it's, should we have him interact with any characters that we've come up with um i don't know because unless we have our like uh for i, I guess with uh, maybe brendan because at least the the generations are connected through the remakes yeah i i guess my thing is it's like i said one of the biggest problems with x and y was just like it felt so disconnected from every other pokemon series so i feel like maybe one maybe as much i love lucas but he i feel like he can wait a little bit longer before coming back yeah the issue i don't is that i think i had ethan come back in gen 4 for the pokeathlon stuff and no then... you had him come you had him come back in gen 6 i remember because i brought up and then i brought up brendan coming back oh. and you shot it down immediately so i was like okay cool oh. weird because i would have sworn i would have done it the other way where because we were talking about then... we were talking about rhyhorn races and his the triathlon stuff oh uh... Wow, it's been a long time since I paid attention I'm to those saying, videos. Do you watch any of our old stuff rather than me saying, hey, let's do a sequel on this? Wow, wow okay. I, I hate the sound of my own voice. How do you think I feel? I have to edit this stuff. But regardless, <laughs> like, we've talked, we've talked. Like, I feel like if Brendan reappeared, like, oh, hey, guys, what's going on? Like, obviously, he'd be happy to see Ash again. I feel like him and Callum would just pretty much be at each other's throats like he's the one person who can get Callum to be like really energetic and loud and everyone's like why do you guys hate each other like we don't hate each other. he's one of my best friends what are you guys talking about but like they just have that thing about each other yeah and I think it would also make a good connection for because again the like anime is, an, is just to sell more of the video game that if we're going to admit anything that's what the anime was built for so the fact have in that connection to gen 3 would be important because the remakes are gen 6 so i think yeah. that's a good connection yeah yeah maybe they bring up may maybe they don't honestly she should have come back regardless but i but once again they, they just were not interested in doing continuity at that point no i'm god that really is no one comes back in this series at all, I, do they? Yeah, yeah, but, and, we, and we've talked, and we've since talked about that before. But that's why we have a handful of characters coming. We, uh, like we, we could have a couple of people come back, back, and as their lead, and like I said, they could very much be at each other's throats. But this is their way of saying, showing that they, they are legitimately close with each other. Okay. Yeah. I... That would be funny, though, them having Brendan and Callum having a relationship of they always seem to be arguing, but yet they're best friends. Yeah, basically like that. Maybe Lucas gets one tiny mention, but he's not because we don't want to have too many characters popping in and out. Yeah. Do you want it to be um, oh God, um, Brendan shows up at like Ash is getting ready to leave, the plane lands, and he comes off the plane, and as Ash is saying goodbye, and it's just like, oh, yeah, I'm here to compete in next year's, or this coming uh, Kalos League. I'm going to travel around now. And 
Maybe, maybe something like that. He doesn't have to appear as often to the point where he's a side character. Just, just maybe a couple of episodes here and there. Maybe, maybe something with the legendaries or something like that. And, and then, and Callum could be like, "Oh, by the way, how's that friend of yours? How's that friend of yours in Hoenn? Oh, May, she's she's cool. Well, and maybe it's revealed at some point they're traveling together. He's like, "All right, hey, good job, Brendan. And now I'll see you later. Or go check up on your girlfriend." He's like, ha, ha, "Shut up." Oh god. Yeah, that would be interesting. And um, I'm telling you, we need to make our we need to talk about our own special where it's just game characters doing their own thing. Oh wait, that's called Pokemon Masters, and they already took that idea from us. And it includes Ash now, apparently, from what I understand. <sighs> yeah, the, it was such an under the worst part is it was such an underwhelming event. <laughs> it was embarrassing. That is also what I hear. It's like, oh, we added him in. Now he's got to compete with people who have teams that are actually strong. <laughs> yeah. And everybody was like, well, what about his interactions with Serena? I'm like, oh, you mean a Serena from a completely different timeline that would not know Ash? Yeah. Okay. I want to see that. And the, spoiler alert, they have no interactions. Yeah. Because this is the game Serena. That's the issue. It's. You're combining universes now. I mean, if you, it was the mult, like if it was called Pokemon Multiverse, maybe then you could have both Serenas show up and be have such different personalities. And that exactly. would be interesting. You could bring in the mirror people. Exactly, but that that's the you have to understand, guys. Though that's the point of these videos. We're not saying in, that we dislike any of the series that we're throwing them into. We just like the idea of throwing these characters in because leaving them out has always frustrated me. They don't all have to be completely relevant, but just seeing them every now and then would be kind of nice. Exactly. Um, so do you have anything else for Callum? I'd we... say I feel like we've been recording for a while, but I never know anymore considering how long it took for us to set up. But I'm going to be honest, I feel like we've gotten Callum down. Somebody who starts off as a prodigy who does well, who becomes a shut-in when he realizes just how bad at people around him can be, who slowly grows moves to open up with other people, particularly Bonnie, Shauna, and like just everybody else. I guess Ash too, to an extent, who doesn't completely trust other people, and for the sometimes he's right about that. But he becomes a better person throughout it, and ultimately is happier. Exactly, and ends up refinding himself at the very end of the story of the story we're telling is he's found himself again and knows what he wants to do yeah maybe the picture they all took together he goes back home and he hangs it in his room or something like that yeah and again i if we, if kind of like what we talked about we hear more about what happens we don't unfortunately we won't we didn't get to see him or we get pokemon chronicles that tip covers everything we get his story of uh, what he's up to in Kalos while Ash's insert time period here. So I'm guessing probably mostly Alola. Yeah, but they keep the same art style that they did for X and Y. So it's just a confusing, like, the good art, the art style that everybody universally loves goes to Kalos. Go, not to Kalos, goes to Chronicles. But the mainline stuff just sticks with the stuff that everybody, that people are just scratching their heads over. There's no storyline reason just to mess with the audience. I mean, I'm not saying that it's necessarily bad. It is very fluid. It's just the f some of the more cartoony elements of the series since that are not great. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> also, I did have one last thing. This would not be, this could just be for a one episode thing. Do you remember the episode where Team Rocket dressed up like Ash and the others and started to, mm -hmm. I would have him get completely fooled by that. Like he's maybe he stands with Team Rocket in their disguise. He's like, "Yeah, you got, you, yeah, you got Azar. Obviously, Team Rocket. You guys are going down." But somehow it gets proven that they're actually the good guys. He's like, "Oh, <laughs> whoops!" And even Team Rocket are like, "How did you fall for this?" Uh, that would be interesting if the disguises come off, and he's like, he's looking at them. And he goes, "Nice, Jesse James disguises." <laughs> Turns back. 
Now we've got to defeat them. <laughs> and, he's, and he's like, oh, oops. But I like, I think we've added enough funny moments where he's funny, but also, but not too many depressing moments where he's just like completely unbearable because this is kind of a tough character in some eyes, but I feel like for the most part, we pulled it off. Now for Sun and Moon, when if we eventually do those videos, I got, I have just about nothing. Is it the same character in Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Moon, at I, least, so we don't have to do four? I think so. I think so. Because that's, as I said, that's the issue with black and white, is that we can't do, that we, we have to do way too many characters at one shot, because there are four distinct characters in the manga and stuff that we'd have to draw from. I feel like I could do one, but like like I said, it, it would, it's just too much work. If you guys want to see it, please let us know, because I'd like to think that we sometimes listen to our fans. And if you've had a request, we've been listening to it. It's just a matter of, like, scheduling and other stuff. Exactly. But is that... Is, 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 that, is that basically it? Are we good to go? I think so. I think Callum's pretty well done. He's unique by comparison to the other characters we've created so far for the series. Yeah, and we get, let's, we've let's given him funny moments, we've given him deep, thought-provoking moments, we, we give him a pretty solid team and some fun stuff, and we've given him some shipping moments, so I feel like everybody can be satisfied, or nobody can be satisfied, which seems a lot more likely for us. I just realized something, there's... Uh, one th quick thing, hit for um, Clement, I want him to hit like a button and one of Clement's inventions just explodes on them at one point. So he had he needs that moment at least. It's just like, it's just like like you ruined my invention. I'm like, well, to be fair, isn't this isn't this what normally happens? The club is just like, leave me alone. It's like all I did was hit the big button. It's like that was the self-destruct button. Why is there a self-destruct button on one of your inventions? Because uh... it's my and he's just like, it's an innator, it has to have one, and we get a yeah, famous infer reference. Maybe he even says, Oh wow, I really like the name I really like the name of your inventions, because Clement's inventions were never their names were pretty awful. Yeah. yeah All right. We, we didn't talk that, about that's Ash. the only other extra moment I just thought. Yeah, we didn't talk about Ash too much, but I kind of feel like every it kind of writes itself at this point. He doesn't necessarily need the closest relationship. I mean, he's he, at the end, he's friends with him, but that their relationship isn't it isn't that isn't his central relationship in the movie. Huh, kind of like Lucas. I like I, I like that we're giving characters other than Ash something to do because they they always give Ash stuff to do. But I think that's everything, at least on my end. Can we close out? Yep. All right. So, ladies, gentlemen, and others, what are your thoughts on our portrayal of Callum? What would you change besides his name pronunciation, because that's a no? What would you add, take away, all that sort of thing? Hey, and let us know if you like these videos, because I feel like y'all do, but you just don't say a whole lot about it, which is fair. Talking to people can be rough. But let us know any changes or what you like, dislike, anything. Exactly. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Yep. And remember, it's Callum, not Caleb, apparently. I don't know. I don't know if we'll ever get confirmation on that. But like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you guys next time. This has been Alex. And Richard. And you have been listening to the Anime Egotists. Good night, and peace easy.